What's up gamers of YouTube, it's your boy the Universal Gamer and I'm here to give you guys a versus video, 4K gaming versus projector gaming. Four times the resolution of 1080p, crispness all inside your face with gaming versus full 1080p on your wall, huge ass 100 plus inch screen all in your face. Which one is more immersive? Which one is more fun to be had? Of course, I'm not saying which one is more crisp because we know 4K is more crisp than 1080p, but which one is more immersive, which one is more fun for gaming, and which one that I personally feel is the best. Well, I'm not really going to talk about which one's the best. I'm just going to give you guys the ups about 4K and the ups about projector gaming and then the downs of 4K and the downs of projector gaming and let you guys know which one I'll be um, using in the long run, which one is more future-proof, and which one is more bang for his buck and which one should you go with if you're a hardcore gamer and you really love gaming and which one is going to really give you that that next gaming experience besides having a next gen console or upgraded pc which one is going to actually complement either one of those so let's go ahead and get started so let's start off with 4k gaming the ups of 4k gaming but first on a side note i want to throw out there real quick I've experienced both of these for the first time, 4K gaming, projector gaming just recently, but not at no trade show, not at no demo, demonstration area or anything like that, in-house. So I mean, so that means I owned and or own a projector or 4K TV to test out in-house. Critically tested out for hours, played all kind of games and stuff like that, and that's why I decided to do this video. So back to the ups of 4K gaming. Um, I remember when they first announced 4K gaming and stuff like that, people were talking about, oh, you're not going to see the difference between 1080p and 4K gaming. The eyes really can't see that much detail and blah, 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 blah. And, you know, those are the same people that were saying you can't see the difference between 480i or 480p versus 1080p and stuff like that. Talking about how they still going to game on a standard definition TV. There's no reason to get an HD TV. But now everybody named mama got a damn HD TV. Just like everybody named mama about to have a damn 4K TV in the future, you know, because um, it is the future. And a lot of people always want to back away from new tech all the time you know when when mp3 players first came out people were talking oh i'm not going to replace my cds you know that's where it's at who the hell wants an mp3 player and now everybody and their mama got a damn ep3 player you know but um the point i'm getting at is that 4k t 4k resolution is something real it's not no gimmick and stuff like that you know uh people are always going to be you know den in denial when first stuff first comes out because you got to really they got to really work themselves into it and stuff like that. Like, I was in denial talking about how I never buy a game console where you got to download every single game. Now I'm so used to it so damn quick to where I don't even think about downloading games on my Xbox One. I just do it and I really don't even care about it or whatever. So, um, that said, um, 4K gaming is such a leap from 1080p and a lot of people don't really realize it. It's like taking a 2.5 megapixel photo with your cell phone versus a 18.5 to 20 megapixel photo on your DSLR. You're putting those side by side and I dare you say you can't see no difference between a 20 megapixel photo on a DSLR versus a cell phone photo. It's a huge difference. You see all kind of fine details. You can zoom the image into 200% and it still looks way clearer than a cell phone picture. So with that said, that's what 4K do to 1080p. Now, when I was testing games out on my PC, um, I had a 4K TV hooked up to my PC and OMG, I must say, it looks super freaking clean. I tested out games like Tomb Raider, Metro Last Light, uh... Skyrim, um, what else? Dishonored, and um, it was just. It was just, it just blew me away. First, I was testing out little small games, you know, games like one of my favorite games of all time, Half-Life 2. Tested out games like that at 4K, games that can easily run at 4K at max settings, you know, f for the obvious reasons. I want to test those games out or whatever because those are games that are easier to run. So, you know, at, Mac, at 1080p, I mean, at uh, 4K resolution, um, it made freaking games like uh, Half-Life 2 look freaking stupid amazing. That game has looked dumb at 4k in a good way it looks super super clean like it looks so sharp so crisp it just blows you away dude like just just how it just does something like it's it's words can't really just describe it it just looks super good and super freaking clean um 
So I started moving my way up the ladder, getting towards, you know, more higher end games. I put in Metro Last Light. So my first thought was like, okay, I'm going to sit more closer to the screen so I can make sure I be able to see the differences. Because I actually thought I wasn't going to see a big difference because Metro Last Light already looked ultra amazing. For anybody that got a gaming rig and able to run Metro Last Light at max settings like, max settings like I can, you already know how good that game looked. That game looked so damn good to where the console score were at a 7 or a 6.5 from IGN, Game Traders, and everybody versus the PC score, which got a 9. That's the first time, almost the first time in history where a game got that big of a leap in score versus a console versus a PC. A PC makes that game look like a whole different game. So um, I put that game in. I loaded up the prison level where you guys get captured and stuff and you're on your, you're on your knees and you're tied up. First, I had it at 1080p, set it to 2K first. I didn't want to set it to 4K right away. I set it to 2K. I'm like, damn, this shit look clean. Okay, I do see little details and stuff like that. I like that. Set it to 4K. Dude, now you would think that a game that has so much detail and already look crisp at 1080p, if you set it to 4K, it's going to make it look too crisp and probably do something to your eyes because it look like too crispy and too sharp and too clear. But actually, it does it. It looks freaking ultra natural, and it looks it just makes the game look super realistic. You know, um, it, it like it like it takes details and add details to the details with a side of detail. Like, I don't know. <laughs> you know, it just it just looks super freaking good, dude. Like, you just gotta be in front of the screen. You gotta just be in person. Fuck all that watching stuff on YouTube. I don't care if you can't set your screen. To, I don't care. Like, it doesn't matter. You gotta you gotta be there. In front of one of these 4K TVs with a PC hooked up to it and see what I'm talking about. Like, and then so I was playing Metro Last Light at 4K and stuff like that for like 20 minutes. I set it back down to 1080p. It looks ugly. Like, it doesn't even look right. It looks blurry now. Like, I'm like, I even hooked it up to my other uh, 1080p TV to make sure that it's not just a 4K TV that looks bad at 1080p and only looks good in 4K. So I'm like, it's probably one of those TVs where it looks good at its native resolution or its highest resolutions. And when you set it down to 1080p, it probably don't look that good. So I hooked it up to my other TV, which is 1080p, and the same thing. It looks blurry because when you're when you play in 4K, first it looks super clear. It looks ultra clear. Chris, you're like, damn, this game look good. Like, I've been missing out. It's like a virgin that probably, finally, that finally got some. Like, damn, this is what I've been missing out on? Damn, okay. So that's what it makes you feel like. You're like, damn, I've been missing out. But then your eyes get so used to it, it seems like you should be playing a game like that naturally. So when you go back and play at 1080p, it kind of takes you an hour to get back into 1080, to 1080p because it's just don't look good no more it's crazy dude it's like if you were to roll up inside your you know bmw you think you bumping and stuff and then i roll up inside my freaking 2015 porsche or something like that or 2015 uh i don't know bentley or something like that it's like damn i thought my car was clean look at that bad boy right there when i also play games when i also play tomb raider you know my god dude like just her hair, her her face, like the dirt, and like you can just see it looks like it's 3D. You know, that's how clear it looks. It looks like it's like don't look like anything is popping out, but it looks like you're looking at something that doesn't have a screen in front of it. It looks like it's not even lit from the back or like a back lit lit screen or anything. It looks like it's just there. Like the the image is just there. That's what 4K makes stuff look like. It's just there. It, it's not a screen. It's not something that's that's lights, like electricity is coming through and it's shining through some LEDs and stuff and it's creating an image with all kind of different color LEDs that's at a high resolution. It doesn't look like none of that. It looks like it's just an image in front of you. That's what it looks like, just the image. It looks like just... Like when an iPhone, when you first looked at an iPhone at its, at its uh, OLED display, when the iPhone 4 and stuff first came out, Everybody, everybody that used to see my iPhone didn't even think it was turned on. They just thought it was just a screen just sitting there. I'm like, no, this is just a screen. It's on. It's not. It just don't look like it's lit. That's how clear it is. So um, that's how clear 4K is. It don't look like it's a lit screen. You know, it depends on what you're looking at and what you're watching and what you're playing. So Tomb Raider looked ultra clean up on there, dude. I couldn't stop playing it. Like, I already beat that game, but I started playing it from the beginning just because I couldn't stop playing it. You know, um, it was so damn clean. What else? Dishonored. Also, one of my favorite games of all time now, you know, uh, mostly a lot of people, if you ask somebody that's like over the age of 25, what's their favorite games of all time? It's going to be like older games and stuff that came down in the 90s and stuff. But actually, you know, Dishonored is one of my favorite games of all time. I think it's in my top 10 or top 15. 
uh, games of all time, which I really, really love. It's just too damn short. I don't know what she said, but not about me, but about you. But anyways, <laughs> Dishonored, man, looks... Man, Dishonored, I couldn't even play the game. I was so busy looking around like, damn. Let me go back to 1080p. Oh, you don't look good. Let me go back to 4K. Damn. Well, let me see 1080p one more time. Uh, it looks good. 4K. Damn. So, <laughs> like, even, even when you look at the signs on the wall, like, you can read the signs inside Dishonored before you even get close to it. I mean, the posters. Before you even get close to it, I'm like, I was getting shot and hit and stuff inside the game. I was so busy looking around, like, damn, wait, hold on for a second. Stop shooting me. Stop hitting me. Damn it. Here, get, get out of my damn way. Damn. Like, it was like, it was crazy, dude. <laughs> like, I was looking at stuff far off in the distance. I'm like, Scratching my head like, dude, who comes up with technology these days? Like, we getting too damn smart around here. Too bad we ain't getting smart inside other er, other areas inside the world. But, you know, that's a whole different topic. But anyways, 4K, yeah, as you can see, it's good. Uh, as far as gaming, sharp, crisp, amazing. It's, it's just... And I didn't even, like, I, I was testing out the 4K TV for a long time before I even put in, like, demanding games. Like, games that already look good. I thought it was, wasn't no point until I put in Metro Last Light. That, that prison level. The little light shining through. You see the little dust particles in the air. You Like, just super, like, it looks, it looks fucking real, dude. Excuse my language. And then when you're walking through the crowd of people inside that little one scene... I, I paid that part again at 1080p. I swear to God, it looks blurry. Like it really does. When your eyes get used to 10, when your eyes get used to 4K, it seems seems so natural that when you go back to 1080p, everything looks blurry. I literally had to force myself to like 1080p again after playing inside 4K for an entire day. Like I really did. Like I honestly had to. I'm not even joking. So um, let's go over to projector gaming. So the ups about projector gaming is that your gaming at 1080p on a huge ass screen and if you were to buy a screen that same size you know you would be paying seven times to five times the amount that you pay for your projector and for your screen that you're projecting it on when i first hooked up my projector i was so skeptical that was the main thing i never was skeptical about 4k you know I was just wondering, does it really look that clean? But projector gaming, I was so skeptical. Is the projector really going to produce a super good 1080p image for me to game on? Is it really going to keep up with the milliseconds response time? Is it really going to, you know, give me that experience that I can get from an LED or LCD TV and stuff like that as far as image quality? I was skeptical all the way until I powered on the projector and powered on my Xbox One and powered on my PC and was switching back between my consoles and my PC. Bruh. Like, I'm like, damn, Gina, the hell? Like, I had Halo, you guys already seen, if you see my video, subscribe to my other channel, you see my video, I had Halo in, that's the first game I tested out, it looked clean, I started smiling, dude, I'm like, dude, come on, really? I expected it to look this damn good, I know I've seen YouTube videos of how clear people projectors look, and that's when they record it off screen. And they upload it to YouTube videos and it still look clean. So I'm playing, I got inside Halo. I'm like, dude, bruh. I put in a split second. I set up like six feet away from the projector inside my gaming chair. My chair is kind of low. So I'm kind of like looking up at an angle at the projector. Split second. Dude, like I'm like, damn, really? That's how, that's, dang, okay. I, I Damn, this is tight, okay. You know, so I'm sitting there, I'm playing it. Literally, after 30 seconds of playing Split Second, which is a racing game on PS3. And this was in PS3, you know, the last-gen consoles only run at 720p. So it doesn't look super clear on a projector because the projector, you know, it's 1080p, but it scales it up to, uh, it scales up seven, it shows it 720p on the screen. And you can run it native if you want to, which is going to make the screen a little bit smaller. Or you can scale it to 1080p, which the projector does, and it scales it to 1080p. And even though it doesn't look super clear like a native 1080p uh, gaming experience, Still, I was immersed within the game and it still looks super clear, you know. So 30 seconds, 30 seconds later, I paused the game, dude. Big ass Kool-Aid smile. Oh, yeah. On my face and stuff. And I called my sister and called my brother. I'm like, y'all got to get your eyes over here, dude. Like right now. Like they're like, what's going on? Just know this projector I got. Yeah. Bring your ass. You about to find out. Dude, like we was up just racing and... <sighs> 
man, and that's just one game. And I started paying other first-person shooters like Destiny, and I'm like, and the amazing thing about a projector, and especially, it's no wonder why some people have been saying that when you got a projector at your house, for some reason, it somewhat feels more better at your house than at the movie theater. It's no wonder, because it really does. I don't know why, even though movie theater projectors are at a way higher resolution than 1080p, which you really don't notice because it's projected like on a freaking 700-inch screen or 1,000-inch screen. But um, anyways, um, so uh, the good thing about a projector is you can sit any distance and get different experiences. If you sit super far back, like if I'm standing right here, my projector is behind the camera, and this is about roughly 10 to 11 feet away. If I sit down right here, completely normal. It doesn't feel like I'm far away at all. It feels like I'm sitting regular distance from a 42-inch TV. That's what it feels like. It's a projector screen. It's a 100-inch screen. It's big, you know. Um, and it makes the image look even more sharp. If I sit medium distance, which is about right here, you know, and I play my game over there, that's the, that's the real good distance right there to play a lot of games at. It feels real good. It feels like you're immersed within the game. It feels like you're kind of in the game, kind of, because it's like the screen is so big. But when you're like six or seven feet away, like you're even more closer, you may think that it's going to make the make the image look blurry. It really doesn't. It doesn't look ultra sharp or anything, but it looks real clear. Even at five feet away, six, five feet away, looks real clear. And if you play a first-person shooter at that distance, my God. Now, a lot of people at work, some, some other people are saying uh, it's hard for them already to play on a 42-inch uh, shoot, shooter game on a 42-inch. So that's kind of playing on a projector screen at 100 inches. That's doing too much. For some reason, it actually makes, it, makes me more concentrated. It makes, it, it makes me able to play better, actually. For some reason, I don't know what it is. I keep telling people, you must gotta, you got to come to my house, dude, because, like, trust me. I know you guys say playing on a bigger screen is harder inside a first-person shooter. I don't know damn projector. I don't know why. Just not on projector. Like it really makes you immerse within it. Cause I guess it feels like you're in the game because the screen is so big. So you can kind of see, like it kind of feel like you're seeing stuff out your peripheral vision, you know. And when you're staring straight ahead, like it just you. I don't know. It, like it, it kind of does something psychologically to your brain where it feels like you're actually the stuff is around you, kind of. You know, I feel like it's like around you, kind of, and you're in there, and like you like. I don't know. It just makes you more immersed within a game or whatever. You know, racing games and shooter games so far are the best to play on a projector with. You know, third-person games too, but I'm just saying, like, as far as immersion and just feel like you just have a smile on your face the whole time you're playing, first-person shooters and racing games, you know, like, no doubt. I haven't played a sports game on there yet. I'm about to get NBA 2K14. I would get, get 2K15, but I don't play 60 bucks for a, for a sports game. I hardly ever buy sports games. I only buy like one sports game every three, three or four years. So, um, yeah, 2K13, about to get that bad boy. And I can't wait to see how that look. That game already looked clear. And and just to play that on a projector and you're sitting like super close up and everybody. And the thing about a projector too, the good thing, the main good thing, if you always have a lot of friends at your house, you can have people sitting on the floor, standing up on the side, just all kind of different locations. You can have like 15 people inside your house and with nobody be in front of the screen. Because the screen is so big, and especially if you got the projector up high, and it's shining to the screen instead of having it sitting on something shining, nobody will be standing in front of the screen. Nobody will be inside each other way. You can actually stand up and play a first-person shooter, and it feels way better than sitting down. You know, I can't wait to see about hooking up my PlayStation Move and having a little uh, and playing my little PlayStation Move and stuff on there. I probably break back, break that stuff back out. You know, just to play on my projector and stuff like that. So, um, yeah. So let's get into the downs of each one. So the downside of 4K gaming is 4K TVs have an issue with keeping up with, with fast-paced games. You know, even though there's 4K TVs that run at 120 hertz, 240 hertz, even natively, you know, still they have a hard time. Just because a game has a high refresh rate or a TV has a high refresh rate doesn't mean that um, it has a high response time. That's the main thing that matters. A lot of TVs these days have like a five millisecond response time, which isn't too bad. So five milliseconds is super quick. Don't get don't get it twisted. You know, that's not that's not slow by any means, but when you're gaming, you can notice it. When you move your stick, bam. How long did it take me to move my stick like that? Move my thumb like that? It didn't take that long, did it? And like a millisecond. That's like a millisecond right there. Bam, millisecond. That's not even a second. That's nowhere near a second. It's like a millisecond. So if a TV moves at five milliseconds, bam. 
So your, your, that means your thing is going to move four more. It's going to take four more milliseconds to move. So that 4K TV I had was running, the best it did was like 10 milliseconds. So if I'm moving, twitching my sticks at one millisecond, it's nine more milliseconds I got to wait for it to actually move. Even sometimes 12 milliseconds, it, 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 the response time or whatever. So that's what the issues with 4K TVs, the response time is not made for a high-end gaming and stuff like that, fast-paced gaming. And that's the reason why when I had a 4K TV, I took it back. I had a 4K Vizio, took it back. And also, when you're playing on PC, I had issues with PC. Um, on my console, um, it don't really look good in 4, at 4K scaled up the f uh, scaled up on a TV or anything. It looks it looks like a regular 1080p image because consoles, first of all, first of all, they can't go to 4K. Second of all, um, the scaled up to 4K or just played on a 4K TV. There's really no point. And then it was just so irritating when when playing a first person shooter and the TV can't keep up with the how when I move my sticks. Even when y'all barely moving my sticks around, like looking around, it's like it's like off. I move my stick, boom. Move my stick, boom. Move my stick, boom. Like it's just too damn slow i'm like no nah, i can't do it as far as taking up to my pc now my my graphics card i would have get a, got a better better experience if my graphics card was able to support hdmi 2.0 i would have been able to run higher than uh 60 frames per second at 4k or i mean at 60 frames per second at 4k but since my graphics card didn't support hdmi 2.0 i was only able to run at 4k at 30 frames per second so uh even with that, a lot of games, it ran real smooth, but some games were super slow. Like, it was super, super slow. Like, I'm talking about, like, 15 or 25 milliseconds. Like, ultra slow and, like, ultra choppy. And was it because... Now, for some games, I had to cut down some of the textures and cut down some things for it to run, all right? But for some games, it wasn't even that wasn't even an issue. Like, Bioshock Infinite. I got that game mostly maxed out, but at 4K, I turned off anti-aliasing completely and cut out, cut down a couple of other things that really didn't matter. And ran it at 4K, it runs perfectly fine at 4K. It's just that the TV does not handle the milliseconds. Like, it was looking... Bioshock Infinite, dude, I started that game all over. The freaking water, the, the tap... Dude, I'm like, damn. Like, it looks so freaking clean in 4K, but just when I start moving the stick around, it would move kind of fast, but it, but it wasn't, so... There's a trickery that people end up finding out that if you go into the game, you turn uh, V-Sync. Some games, if you turn V-Sync off, it'll bypass all that stuff about how it's like... The, it, it'll bypass the milliseconds. It, it, the milliseconds wouldn't even matter because it'll start moving off super quick or whatever. It's kind of like It kind of like bypasses it or whatever. And in some games, if you turn V-Sync on... It allows you to move, and it won't. You won't notice the milliseconds or whatever. You get a lot of motion blur a little bit, but you won't notice the milliseconds that it takes to move around or whatever. Because in Bioshock Infinite, even at 4K, I was getting about uh, 70 frames per second or whatever. But since I can't run 4K at um, on a TV through my HDMI at 30 uh, at 60 frames per second, only 30 frames per second, I turned V-Sync off, and then I was able to move around super quick at 60 to 70 frames per second at 4K, and I kind of didn't notice the milliseconds, but you kind of do at the same time, so, you know, I just couldn't bear with that, you know, just, especially when I hooked up my Xbox One to it, and I put in the Halo, me and my son was trying to play Halo, and I, even single player, I trying to play Halo, just one player, I, I couldn't do it, it was too 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 slow the tv is way too slow now the downsides to projector gaming now gaming on a projector like i said it was it was super cool immersive i still got my projector now or whatever um but the only downside to it it doesn't have any issues as far as milliseconds actually it's it's it's, it's as good like i said in my other video on my other channel it's as good or better than the hd tv as far as the response time at least the projector i got which is six hundred dollars the screen was another 100 and something dollars and then um the mountain bracket for the ceiling was like another 30 something dollars i think and there you go you got a whole projector setup oh and a long, super long hdmi cord was about 30 bucks i believe or 25 bucks and there you go you know um and all these products, except for the screen, all these things I ordered was five-star rating, and the screen was like a four-star rating. But anyways, the only issue is rainbow effect. Inside the projector, there's like a little spinning, spinning wheel, I believe, and that's how it creates its like images and stuff like that. And inside some, inside most games, but a couple, a handful of movies, if you move your eyes across the screen, like like jack your eyes across the screen, you see this like this little rainbowish effect, and it kind of like 
it kind of makes you feel the same way with, that the active shutter glasses make you feel when you have those on for a while. Kind of makes you feel like nauseous, not nauseous. Don't make me feel nauseous, but make you feel like you gotta, like you're gonna get a headache and kind of like dizzy a little bit. But it only happens when you got a white image on top of like a dark image. So if you got like a white crosshair and you're inside like a dark room and you start moving around with the crosshair, you can see like on the outside of the white uh, crosshairs of your little gun or whatever, like you can see like this little red, green, blue, like little, like super quick. Like it's like, like flashy kind of, it's like kind of like distortion. Like it kind of messes with you a little bit, like a tad bit. But other than that, that's the only issue I have, man. Um, that's it for projector gaming. Um, but like it is present, that rainbow effect is present, especially like I said, if you, especially if you're looking at a black and white uh, video or image or something like that, a black and white gaming uh, image, um, you really see it a lot. But um, other than that, just different colors and stuff. As long as it's not white on top of black, then it really doesn't it really doesn't uh, do it. But whenever you have a white image on top of a dark background or a gray background or you know whatever, that's when you really see it. But other than that, man, projector gaming is the best bang for its buck versus the 4K TV. If you were to get a TV that's 100 inches at 1080p, you know, or even 75 inch TV, a 75 inch 1080p TV will cost you easily anywhere between a thousand to two thousand dollars, anywhere between there. A projector plus the screen and mount and HDMI cord around 750 to 800 dollars way worth the buy and you get a way bigger screen 1080p and it's real crisp the only thing is i say get a gray screen if you want super dark blacks or whatever or and or get a better projector like a more expensive projector if you want like a, a huge ass 200 inch screen or something like that 100 inches is way good enough for me no pun intended no homo um so that's good enough for me for what i'm do, using it for which is gaming and for watching movies blu-ray movies Looks real good up on there. And the best bang for his buck right now, I say any game that got an Xbox One, PS4, or a gaming PC, projector gaming is where it's at, man. That's why I can't see myself going back to HD TVs only to play a couple of games if I don't feel like using my projector. Other than that, oh, the only other downside to projectors, it's lamp life is more, it's way less than the HD TV. So after about a year and a half to two years, you'll be replacing your lamp inside your projector. And they run you roughly around 100 to 115 dollars. Not too bad. And I say it's a good price to pay since you're getting the 100 inch freaking screen. If you were to buy a 100 inch 1080p screen, it costs you easily freaking three thousand dollars, even more than that, about five thousand. So, um, hey, I say it's worth it, man. Especially how clear it looks. I can't stop saying that. How clear it looks. It looks freaking clear. It's stupid ridiculous. So, with that said, man, it's been your boy, the Universal Gamer. Thank you guys for watching the motherfucking video, and I'm out. Peace. The universal, the universal game. The universal, universal game. The universal, the universal game.